Caddis Maximus here. This is just a basic kind of introduction, d discussion, comparison of kitchen knives. These are going to be like much more common brands that people are going to run into at the stores, that type of stuff. And I felt that kind of in a niche, there's lots of big time YouTubers and a lot of really excellent videos about kitchen knives. This actually represents a collection I've been building up for like <laughs> 15 years. I had a hard time <laughs> spitting that out. Uh, a lot of it just at thrift stores, occasionally a garage sale, a couple I bought new, but these are just common brands and kind of what I've discovered. And so that's kind of the niche is this, this is more about common brands and then just a bunch of different shapes. Really with kitchen knives, it comes down to really just having a chef's knife, maybe a small paring knife, and maybe something like a bread knife. We'll take a quick closer look at a lot of these. Uh, and that's just kind of the basic thing. I do run my knives through the dishwasher. I'm not a knife aficionado. I just kind of go through the thrift stores and just seen so many absolutely terrible knives. Then when I've run into a few of these, um, it was obvious in the bin. They don't show up very often. People don't really donate knives very often. Uh, and when they do, they're usually just basically destroyed. I mean, it looks like they're... Some, I've seen kitchen knives where people are like chopping wood or something with them. Anyway, I run them through the dishwasher. All these have been run through the dishwasher. The only issue sometimes is if any knives like this. This is a little American-made knife here. Uh, as far as pairing knives are concerned, this is one of my favorite. Really compared to, I have a Hinkles, a Chinese Hinkles. And we'll talk about the Hinkles in a second. But this is like a traditional 3-inch pairing knife. This is a pretty nice one, forged. But I really like this one even more. Because when I, you know, you're trying to cut the center out of fruits and vegetables, that type of stuff. Uh, this one just happens to be really thin, has this little recess here, and really just allows you to get very tight angles. Um, and just as compared to like a normal paring knife, that's what I like about this so much is the fact that it is just super thin, it even gives you a little bit of flexibility. One of my absolute favorite, and I even forgot what brand that is. And then this is a standard Hankles. This is what we considered a standard paring knife. And so I run these through the dishwasher. The chemicals can be harsh on the edges. Usually I just use a basic stone like this to hone up the edge. Sometimes I use something along the lines of this. This is like a chef's choice. This is a little diamond rod sharpener. It has both a flat side as well as a round side to get into things like the serration on bread, bread knives, that type of stuff. Obviously, on a steak knife, let me get that out of here. We have a you're not going to get into some of these really tight serrations, you'll need like a triangular file or something to get into those. But this is just a standard steak knife, this is just a cheesy brand, <laughs> a dash of that. Um, but I noticed it was forged, and so I thought they were more than good enough for me. And sorry to jump around, but it's just kind of a basic talk. So, this would just be like a sharpening rod. A basic sharpening rod, I should say. And I guess we should finish up with the steak knives. This would be a non serrated steak knife. This would be a hollow stainless steel handle. This is a Chicago cutlery. And I don't mind these. All these brands that I have here, I think the Farberware are the absolute worst. Farberware is like the cheapest knife brand that you know you might actually spend money on just because they're at the corner, the whatever local box store corner store that you have if they're going to have a knife more than likely it's going to be farberware and their brands aren't great i think even chicago cutlery is better anyway just want to point out what a steak knife that is not serrated is it's just like a basic knife and if you get a non-serrated steak knife some people don't like the three inch pairing knife so you could get something like this which is a non-serrated steak knife and then this would just act like a four or four and a half inch pairing knife and we'll get these out of the way. I think I found these at Albertsons. They were pretty cheap. These are the ceramic knives. I did like that these had protectors. Ceramic knives are, are very hard, and they can cut certain types of uh, food items really well just because they're super hard. But I've never had good luck with them. The edges always seem to chip. They're just so darn brittle. And you have to use a diamond sharpener to sharpen the things, which makes it a nightmare. But when they're new, uh, they can really slice very well and they are really lightweight so if you're looking for like just a really lightweight knife maybe you have carpal tunnel or something like that maybe look at the ceramics you just have to be super duper careful with them 
I mean, I chip them. Even if you use, you know, wood or plastic cutting boards, composite cutting boards, you're slicing. Sometimes you rock or twist, and that rocking or twisting, this causes little chips to happen right on the fine edge. I don't know if you can see here. Oh, it's kind of hard to see, but I already have a little chip in this one, and I only cut like two things with it. It's just amazing how easily they really chip. They talk about how long they last, etc., etc. And maybe if it's just you're using it to cut apart produce or something. Um, but otherwise, I don't recommend the ceramic knives, particularly because they're just a hassle to sharpen, and they do. They just chip. Their edge is excellent, but they just chip all the time. And you can't use any traditional knife rods with them. And let's get the fiber wares out. This is just a real basic plastic handle, uh, anti-stick. I think it's like a ceramic. There are a lot of companies that are just totally moving away from Teflon uh, because of the stigmatism of Teflon. Uh, you eating it and you having problems. The thing with Teflon is when you eat it, it doesn't. It's totally inert and it doesn't get to you. The issue is is that when it's put on pans and then pans are left on burners, they get up to 500 degrees or more then the Teflon breaks down and then that's when you have a problem. And that's just translated into any Teflon is really bad. But companies are now moving into composite and ceramic coatings. So anyway, basic fiberware, that's what this is. This thing, you know, that's what a $10 fiberware is. Uh, to give you an idea, we have these fiberware pros. This would be just like an eight inch chef's knife. I'm not sure that what this is called, but this is like a chef's knife only. A little bit uh, shorter, not quite as tall. Barber wares are cheap. They grind the top, so the, each corner of the top of the knife is actually pretty sharp on Farber wares. And so if you're cutting, like, really tough to cut stuff, you know, blocks of cheese, Parmesan, it kind of leaves a, it's pretty uncomfortable, even though I kind of like the shape of the handles. And these are weird. These types of knives are hollow stainless steel handles, and they somehow weld them. You can actually see the obviousness of the seam from the forged blade. Knives like this, they're a little safer when they have this, you know, whatever this is called down here. Helps, you know, just get a good grip, not have to worry about your finger slipping. But the issue is, is the edge doesn't go all the way to the end of the knife. And so when you're sharpening it, it makes it a hassle to try to get right up in this edge right here as you sharpen it. The blade edge recesses, so if you try to cut something, you'll cut, 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 and then it'll stop cutting once you hit this point. And so it becomes a little bit annoying. And one last note on these types of Farberwares is the Farberware Pros are like the same grade as a KitchenAid, like standard hollow stainless steel handle. And that kind of gives you an idea. KitchenAid's basic is the same as Farberware Pro. Another aspect to these KitchenAids is like one, even their basic ones, you can see that there's just a little bit of rounding. They just broke the edges on the top of the knife. It's a nice little attention to detail and makes a lot more comfortable when you're trying to press it on the top, even though they have this lip. Hinkles, a lot of knives do that where they have the lip here, um, as well as a bunch don't, such as, you know, this Mundial here. And to quickly finish off on the KitchenAid, a better quality KitchenAid. This is still, I believe, made in China, but this is a forged steel handle. You know, because you can just see the whole, has a full tang all the way through. Nicely finished. And the more premium KitchenAids are German steel. A lot of knives are German steel. It's like the thing to put on your knife. German steel. But if you are going to get a KitchenAid, they're not very expensive for this better quality forged ones. And I certainly recommend that. Might as well get these white handle knives. So these white handle knives are, the handles I believe are probably propylene. These are commercial knives. They're supposed to, they're, the handles are ready to go through the sanitization, uh, heavy duty chemical dishwashers used at restaurants and cafeterias, etc. Um, I do like Dexter brand knives because they're American made. They sharpen well. They have a good steel, even though they do corrode. You can't have some rust on Dexter knives. But they're easy to get, they're American made, they perform well, uh, especially for the price. And you can see like on this, um, using Brillo pads on knives just absolutely decimates them. It's really surprising The Brillo pads really just scuff up uh, the tar <laughs> out of knives. But some people may like this, may like actually just commercial grade ones that are totally, you know, sanitation rated. And these polypropylene handles oftentimes have these 
you know, special texturing. This has nice finger grips on this 8-inch Seth's knife, making just really easy to handle, really easy to sharpen because the handle has the little uh, P part right here to keep your fingers safe. But then you have full access to the edge. So when you're cutting something, you can cut all the way across, whether you're chopping pizza. I don't use rolling pizza cutters. I use a 10 inch chef's knife. Works so much better to just chop down on, on the pizza. Really, I mean, that's the way all pizza restaurants, uh, or at least a lot of the good ones I've been at, they use big knives. They don't use uh, rolling pizza cutters. So Dexter's a really good option, especially because Dexter has like a hundred different kinds of knives. So you have Dexter, which is, and they're really just common in the commercial. This happens to be a Dexter produce knife. I really like, of all the weird knives, I really like this one because it's just a squared off knife. Has a nice little finger guard here. And it, oddly enough, I use this a lot when I like want to make sandwiches. I spread butter or mayonnaise, that type of stuff, and then I can just flip it around. And then cut the sandwich with a nice knife edge and it has a nice squared off tip so I can spread this way or I can spread with the back. It's kind of like a universal knife. And I really like this. It's actually known as a produce knife, but it's one of my favorite. Of course, another brand, and even though they have really light laser etching, is Mundial. It's a Brazilian brand. You know them either by their name or by the little pattern, which is the four card suits. You also know it's like a more of a commercial rated knife or kitchen product when it has an NSF certification. Really, it just means that it's sanitation rated. Anyway, um, the reason I even have this, once again, is I actually found this at a junk junk store, and I was actually uh, pretty stoked about it because it's a nice 10-inch knife. Mundals are pretty good because they do round the back of their knives. A good, even the Dexters break the edge. It's really like the Farberwares are just terrible, terrible knives. They're almost as bad as no-name Chinese, just no-name Chinese knives. But anyway, you shouldn't be afraid of the Mundal either because they're definitely a decent knife brand. And even some brands that don't seem like they're really, their names seem cheesy, but they make good products. This happens to actually be like a, uh, this is an NSF rated uh, commercial kitchen. Uh, I don't, it's not a steak fork, but you know, it's just one of those big kitchen forks. I always recommend having one of these because they're just so great to be able to, grab onto something and then you can just use whatever size knife you need to do the cut the cuts that you want to make i always ding up my knives that's why i don't ever buy expensive ones but this is a nicer one because this is for commercial kitchens and you know it's like high carbon molybdenum german steel so sometimes and that's the whole purpose is sometimes first street names that uh like this, uh, that kind of sound cheesy actually are good brands. So you have to be careful. And a lot of, when it comes to like old companies in the world and in the United States, a lot of them happen to have to do with knives. Dexter, um, can trace their lineage back like 200 years or something. I mean, it's crazy, but the Dexter is, is one of the oldest company, continuously operating companies in the United States. First street's been around since 1871. They're a 150 year old company pretty surprising so anyway don't be afraid of the commercial grade products because a lot of times they work great and they're actually really reasonably priced because they're selling to restaurants uh, who <laughs> abuse and go through a lot of equipment and so they really are made to perform and the nice thing is you don't have to worry about running through the dishwasher or any of that kind of stuff anyway continuing on we will uh I'm not really sure what this knife is called, but it's just a small serrated bread knife, and that's the whole purpose. Serrated knives, um, even with really sharp edge and products like bread, soft cheeses like breeze, uh, a lot of that type of stuff, you actually get a better cut if you can just saw a little bit with it. So it's kind of nice to have a small version, and this happens to be a Henkel's, and we'll talk a little bit more about Henkel's in a minute. And then this is just a really large bread knife. And I never knew anything about this brand, like Cut Lux or, you know, <laughs> a cut above ordinary. I just knew when I picked up the knife, I thought this is surprisingly heavy. It's obviously a forged steel handle. Pretty darn nice. They even do a little nice thing where they even laser etch like a little... I'm not even sure what the shape is there, but they just do these neat little laser etchings. Full tang. And that's generally how you can tell uh, a better quality knife really is the forged handle. And uh, that's bread knives, and that's just another brand that uh, you can keep an eye out for. 
brands that are a little bit cheap i don't you know people don't buy a lot of cleavers and they really tend to hold on to cleavers um what we have here is a laser plus this is a hong kong brand this is probably the cheapest brand that i would ever consider buying and they're re easily the same quality as a farberware maybe even a little better than a farberware to tell you the truth because if we compare this laser plus to a farberware I never liked the fact that the Farber wares have really square handles on a lot of their knives. It doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. And kind of small rivets. So this Laser Plus actually has larger rivets and a more rounded handle. Anyway, some people like cleavers because they're really good for chopping up stuff. Because you just have a lot of mass out there. And uh, gets your kind of chopping done. Just has a nice deep blade. Which sometimes is also handy because you can use, I mean, the knife cuts and you can use a knife for whatever you want, even if it's not for a specific, you know, engineered purpose, such as dicing onions, mushrooms, etc. You can use a cleaver, chop it up, and then what you have is you have this big surface. So you can chop and then use it to scoop up a whole bunch of stuff and then, you know, put it in your pan or whatever. And that's kind of the nice thing about cleavers. You don't have to use them to, you know, hack apart a slab of beef. Or tofu if you're vegan. They're just great because they're kind of like a knife and a spatula in the same uh, in the same blade. And that would be kind of like this brand here, which is Traumatina. These are actually, a lot of their pans are in a lot of stores, but not a lot of their knives, especially like their professional brand. This is also sanitation rated. And it is a Brazilian knife. This is made in Brazil. And versus these other cleavers, you know, one... This is a Traumatina, if we can just see there, is quite a bit thicker and it's quite a bit longer. So if I'm actually doing quick chopping action versus like Chef's Knife, this one is just really excellent. The way it's weighted, of course, a full tang forged handle. This is my favorite knife to chop with. I've actually beat up the edge quite a bit. I need to take it down. This is also hollow ground, which does make the edge a little bit weaker, but it does slice narrow stuff pretty good. And one thing I really like using this for is because it has this real, I mean, it's full thickness all the way up, as you can see here. It makes the knife extremely rigid. And versus, say, making cuts with a chef's knife, make sure not to cut myself, with like traditional chef's knives, come on camera, you can see that the knife is, an entire, is a wedge the whole way up. And what I found is like if you're cutting things like Parmesan, hard cheeses, aged cheddar and big blocks, etc. You know, maybe if you get those two pound blocks with chef's knives, I mean, you have to put a lot of pressure down and you're putting a lot of pressure through the entire cut. And it's because as the cheese splits apart, it's kind of matching the V shape of the blade. So you get friction across the whole surface of the blade or something like this where you have a nice sharp edge. And then straight walls, what happens is it starts splitting the cheese or whatever, you know, tough material you're cutting. It starts splitting apart, but then you have a square edge. So what ends up happening is the friction only ends up being on the lower portion of the knife. And it actually just goes through a lot easier. That tied with the fact that this just happens to be a very rigid blade. Uh, this is my very favorite knife for cutting cheese and for chopping just because you have a lot of length and a lot of mass out there. Easily as much mass in this, just because it's thickness and length, as there is in a cheap cleaver. And before I forget, it's not a joke. So many knives are just like German steel. Other good knife brands are these Santoku knives, which have been popularized, the Japanese style knife. Uh, knives that have these little grinding indentations is exactly that. These are still a V taper knife, but the little indentations. The food product is supposed to kind of ride up along these flats and supposed to reduce friction and reduce the likelihood of product sticking to the knife. And, you know, it it's kind of really depends on what you're cutting, how effective those little grind marks. A good knife will actually offset these. So you have a grind there, but you can see this one's offset a little bit. Really cheap ones, they'll grind them at the same spot on both sides and it'll be like wafer thin right in where those indentations so a better attention to detail is when they these little uh indents are actually offset each from each other so it doesn't it do, compromises the uh lower portion of your knife less i should say 
and it's not exclusive to Santokus. You know, we have our Hinkles. This is just a very large, like seven inch Santoku. This one is a, uh, and that's a pretty decent brown forged full tang handle. This is a cooking uh, with Califon or by Califon, cooking with Califon. And this one they specifically say forged on it, but this is actually not a bad brand. But it's not limited to that because, of course, you can have those uh, friction reducing indentations on any kind of knife, like in this case, a chef's knife. I'm going to save the talk for the Hinkles last. Uh, another good brand, like this is Molybdenum Steel. These are Madame Knife TS. It's not an MS, that is a TS Madame Knife. Really like these knives. They're still around, still making, have a huge array of knives. This has been the, through the dishwasher a hundred times. The only thing I will say is all, all my knives that I have, this is the only one where the tang has broke. Super annoying. It's been working good ever since. But still, that thing kind of rocks up. I should really just get rid of this knife. But it's at um, all my knives. And you can just see right there. This is a Japanese-made knife. And so I thought it was going to be really good in the edge and everything. It performs well. But I was just really disappointed that the tang decided to break on me. We have other Santoku styles. Uh, this is if you like a really grippy handle. This is actually a silicone over-molded handle, forged full tang. This is a Fury, and this is actually an Australian knife with, of course, German chrome molybdenum, molybdenum vanadium steel with the Augusto grip. They even got Fury molded into the grip. Um, and if you're somebody who likes that or maybe is looking for a knife that does have a soft grip, that is just super tacky. There is a brand Fury, and Furies are actually pretty good knives. And it's always nice to have an Australian uh, made knife. Uh, I like how they're revolutionary Australian design, <laughs> made in China. But still, not a bad uh, kind of Santoku style knife. Really don't know what's re revolutionary besides maybe having that soft grip on there. Continuing on, we have like this uh, Echo Eterna, and they call this a slicer knife. It's pretty thin. It has a little bit of flexibility, not too much. Really large handle. Uh, pretty easy to grip. This is also a Japanese-made knife. And uh, if you're doing, if you're really into more cooking, then this is a style knife that you would want, which is just something very, something long, short, pretty narrow, great for things like turkey carving or when you have to just do long cuts but you want something just a little bit lighter weight and something where you can maybe change direction like carving turkey you may have to adjust to avoid bones etc and so just having a long kind of not very tall and kind of thin blade actually makes it nice and i'm picking up knives and getting them off the table so i don't get con confused myself too much anyway we have some other brands actually victorinox so who the famous makers of the swiss army knife I don't even know how to pronounce this word, but this is actually a Swiss made 8 inch chef's knife. This is a Victorinox. It is not quite a full tang, but it is a triple rivet. Pretty good steel. And, you know, I saw it and I thought, well, gosh, you know, Victorinox has that whole history with Swiss Army knives. Um, and so their chef's or kitchen knives ought to not be too bad. And so just wanted to point that out. Just so many brands. Here's another brand, which I own a couple, or maybe just one of their pans, but Emeril is a respected brand. Uh, this is actually a German-made knife. Seems kind of basic, so you're going to have to be careful because, you know, this is like a plastic handle with just a trident. But you look at the name Emeril, and this is actually a genuine German-made knife. And it's cheaper than, say, a Henkel's professional grade, but still, it is a nice knife. I consider this to be one of my better knives. I really just like this unit. This like it's like a seven inch chef's knife. It's a really nice size, pretty good steel. Definitely holds an edge well, and definitely seems pretty hard because it seems to resist the scouring pad a little bit better than other knives. I really learned my lesson, you know. Try to avoid using scouring pads on knives because all you're doing is just really blemishing the beans out of them. But once again, Emerald, not a bad. Uh, brand and you always know it by their little trident symbol so henkels is like the brand that's like you know at costco so many places where when people are looking for the premium a nice knife 
it's going to be a Hankel's. And you would think if I took both of these Hankel's here, you might say, well, even though this one does have the indentations, you'd say, well, look at this one. This one's not only forged, it just has this whole steel top portion, only two rivets, but it just has the whole knife is basically steel. The rivets are just holding on the lower portion of the handle. They're not like taking any of the forge. You might think that this is a really nice Hankel's. And it is a nice Hankel's, but it's a Chinese Hankel's. It's not a German Hankel's. And so how what Hankel's does is on their cheaper knives, you have the little stick figure man. This is the actual German. And they actually sell these as, as a whaling. And this is the ice hardened ones. And those are the actual German made ones. And they actually have a two stick figures. And one of the other differences is if we look at the blade thickness. The German ones are like 50% thicker. This is a very thick, very heavy, triple riveted uh, kitchen knife. And it's probably one of my best. It's actually one of, it is my thickest out of all the knives I have. This is by far the thickest. It's super rigid, kind of like that Traumatina. Um, this is probably my best uh, chef's knife, to tell you the truth. This is a real nice unit, and so that's kind of why I wanted to point out is um, looks can be deceiving. The handle on this might make you think that this is the better knife, when in reality, this one, which has this more traditional, um, high-quality handle, is actually the better one. By a wide margin. This has better steel, once again, cryogenically treated into just extra thick, extra heavy duty knife. And real quick, talking about the sharpening rods, these are just for bringing up the edge a little bit. A lot of times when you're cutting with the knife, it rolls the edge over a little bit. And so this brings it back just a little bit. This these rods aren't meant to actually sharpen the knife. You need to sharpen the knife if it's dull. But if you're doing some cooking, you have a little nick or it's just you know, it was cutting nice and then goes down a little bit. Sometimes you can just bring it on one of these rods. This is a basic, uh, they call it the Henkels International. This only has straight uh, flutes or serrations in it, which is okay. But they actually are better ones. I found a couple of nice commercial ones. You do have other options, such as this one. This is a Brazilian Mundial. And this is actually a smooth one. To tell you the truth, I kind of like the smooth one better than the serrated ones because it's really serving that purpose where it's just for kind of lump, smoothing out and bending back any dents or folds in the edge or little lumps that may have and I kind of like the smooth one and that's what a mandial looks like and it seems only the commercial ones actually have the hanging rings and then we have this double sharp brand with two pound signs this is actually a forged steel one out of Sheffield, England. And we can see that this one here has two different sets of uh, serrations in it. A lower quality Henkel's is linear. And this one has two different sets of serrations. Secondly, a better quality one like this. This is just really long so that it, you have, even if you're sharpening big knives, you just have no issue going across it. And I don't know, but this one, I don't know if it really sharpens, but it certainly seems to have just a lot more grab. You can feel that when you're doing this action, and I'm probably not even doing that correctly. Anyway, this was a long half hour video, but I'm kind of known on this channel for doing reviews and comparisons and, and discussions, and I haven't done one for a long while. And so I kind of wanted to do that as my contribution to the whole nice discussion. But this time, just talking about a bunch of random brands that people would see uh, at various grades of stores. Whether it's, I don't know if Bed Bath & Beyond sells knives, but places like that and Costco, etc. And then differences on all these different shapes and styles and how at least one thing about kitchen knives is that there's just so many brands and some of them are really good that as long as you don't, you know, get this, the cheapest no-name stuff, you'll probably end up with something halfway decent. Just stay away from, like, Farberware. My goodness. And there, there's always this huge progressive grades and quality. And, of course, don't be afraid of the commercial products with the white handles, you know, from Mundial or Dexter, etc. Because those knives are great. They prove themselves and... Tens of thousands of restaurants and commercial kitchens 
across the world, if not hundreds of thousands or millions. And you can save some money and get just absolutely, totally respectable knives with going with commercial grade stuff too. And they're sanitization rated, so no issues throwing them in the dishwasher, that type of thing. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody who's been watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.